going on guys? So right now I'm about to do a trip from Virginia to Fayetteville, North Carolina and this blue Peterbilt behind me. Now this is a lease truck. My truck's currently in the shop right now, so I'm taking this one. I'm just getting a few things done like preventive maintenance. I'm also getting a brake chamber replaced, etc. So I'll be in this truck for the time being, but I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a walkthrough and show you how the truck is. It's pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie, it's got a lot of space in it, but I'll show you guys from the outside to the inside. So we'll go take a look at that right now. Now the blue accent does look pretty nice with the trailer combined. I'll go ahead and show you guys under the hood as well. So this is what we got under the hood. We got the Cummins engine. So here's how it looks on the inside. So as you can see, it is an automatic. But one thing I do have to say about it so far is it does have a lot more space. I like that in the bottom bed, you can actually sit all the way up and still have plenty of room. I haven't been up there yet, but I could probably almost sit up right in that bed and not have any issues still be pretty comfortable we do already have a microwave i got some storage up here got some storage down below as well don't mind my paperwork chilling down there i just kind of stashed it away real fast oh and another thing that i like about this truck is it has the kill switch for the batteries so if you're going to be leaving the truck off for a few days you can go ahead and switch those off and that prevents you from drawing too much energy or too much power from the refrigerator that we have over here. That way it doesn't kill the battery when it comes time to start the truck. We just got some waters in there. And then we have some more storage here. Just put your clothes in there. And then we have a little nightstand and table up here as well. But yeah guys, this is how it is. So mine, you can store things under the bed. This one's got the ducks and uh, whatever else is going on down there, so. That is blocked off, but it does have all the other storage here as well. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. And then we'll get some AC blasting in here too. It's very hot right now. So another thing that I like about this truck that I don't have in the other truck is that instead of having the horn here on the steering wheel, it's up here, like the traditional ones. I've been having a subscriber ask me to blow the horn for a while now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for him now. I got the perfect opportunity. So this is how the horn sounds on this Peterbilt. It's got a nice and loud sound to it, it sounds good. So I'm actually pretty anxious for this next load up and that's because we have an estimated 10,000 pounds to put into the back of my trailer. It's gonna be really tight, it's gonna be hard and I'm honestly not sure if we're gonna get it all but we're gonna do our best. We're gonna be breaking furniture down, we're gonna be disassembling things, uh, trying to compress everything as tightly as possible. I don't wanna have to leave an overflow, that's the last thing that I ever wanna do and I really only had to do that one time. Now, I know that it does happen, but like I said, I always try to avoid that from happening because I want to make the customer happy. I want to do a good job. I want to look good for the company. So, uh, you know, those are the reasons that I don't want to have an overflow. But anyways, I got some really great guys coming with me and, you know, I've worked with them a lot of times. There's a really good loader. Uh, you'll see them loading, but I know that I'm in great hands. So all we can do is just give it our best effort and we'll see exactly how it goes. So like I said, I am in Virginia right now. I'm gonna be going to Fayetteville, North Carolina to load up in the morning tomorrow. Uh, so I'm gonna get a few things prepped right now. I'm gonna go ahead and drive over there, get some rest, and I'm gonna get ready to go hard tomorrow. So wish me luck, guys. I'm really hoping for the best on this. So I'm headed south right now for about 183 miles. And we only have about three hours until we arrive at the client's house. So it's really not that far but I'm gonna stop a little early. Obviously, I'm not gonna go all the way to their home. I need to stop at a truck stop. I'll stay there for the night. I also need to get a lightweight before I arrive to their house in the morning. But anyways, I wanted to talk about the truck. So I was curious, what do you guys think about automatic trucks? Or at least the people who's watching my videos, do you guys prefer automatic? Do you prefer manual? What's your preference and why? I'm not gonna lie, driving the automatic's really easy and in most cases, I gotta say I prefer the manual. For me, it's just, it's a little bit more fun to drive just because it gives you something to do, especially on those long drives. And it's nice when you're going up and down hills, being able to be more in control of the gears and downshift when you're climbing up so that you can maintain your speed better and climb it faster. But I mean, really you can do the same thing in this type of truck. There's a little lever right here and you're actually able to shift it up and down as well. And I found that when you're about to start going up a hill, if you just shift down with the lever, a gear or two, it'll help you maintain your speed. Because if you were to just let the truck drive 
and you start going up a hill, I definitely notice that it's gonna start dropping speed by a good bit and the RPMs will sit right around there and when you're climbing, that's not good. It's gonna start slowing down pretty fast. So I just found it best to go ahead and shift down right before you go up the hill and it does a pretty good job of it by itself. I will say that the automatic's pretty nice in traffic just because when it's built up, you don't have to use a clutch or you don't have to float as much. So for that reason, uh, it can be a little bit easier. You just do the same thing. You put your engine brake on. Like I say, you can shift up and down with this manually when you want to or when you need to to make things go a little bit more smooth. And other than that, you're pretty much just cruising. So this is also my first time driving a Peterbilt of any kind. Now I know it's not your classic long nose Peterbilt with the 18 speed transmission, which I would really love to drive one of those at least once in my lifetime. Hopefully I get the opportunity to do so. I've actually never driven an 18 speed. The most gears that I've changed is 13. And you know, it's also funny because I actually learned how to drive a manual in a semi truck. I never owned a manual car or anything like that before. I did have a motorcycle, which is manual, but I would say that's a good bit different being that the clutches on the handlebar versus down here on the floor and there's no stick involved you just shift with your foot so I don't really count that it's a little bit of the same concept but I also had a friend that tried to show me how to drive manual for a little while I only did that for about an hour or two I was definitely starting to grasp the concept and I was getting it here and there but I basically learned how to drive a stick shift and a semi truck so I think that's pretty cool so I'm actually gonna go ahead and go to the Kinley truck stop it's a petrol it's really nice and I'm about 90% sure that I'll have parking over there even though I'm showing up a little bit later I've been there one other time and it's a pretty big truck stop they got a lot of spaces you know normally petrol does I enjoy stopping at the petrol so the coolest thing about this truck stop that I'm about to go to that I'm looking forward to showing you guys is they actually have two trucks inside two semi trucks inside they have a Peterbilt and they have a Kenworth on display and they look really nice guys you'll see in a bit I'll give you guys a tour of that whenever we get over there they have a really nice chrome shop and it's overall a good atmosphere so Like the name of that truck stop road sounds like a safe haven here it is the kinley 95 you can see the peterbilt that i was talking about in the window over there but once i get parked i'll show you guys a closer look at it hopefully i didn't jinx what i was saying about finding parking here but i would imagine there's something back here like i said guys there's a lot of spaces here the only thing that sucks about it right now is I was going to get out, walk over there and show you guys. But with it raining right now, I'm going to go ahead and wait a little bit because I'm supposing that my parking space is going to be all the way towards the back. And that will be a long walk in the rain. So I will say one thing, I'm not used to backing the automatic. I'm used to feathering the clutch down here to give me my power to back up in reverse. But here you just kind of hit the gas and then the brake and it's a little bit more jerky, but eventually I'll get the hang of it. But I'm gonna wait a few minutes. Hopefully the rain just completely dies off and then I'll go inside and show you guys how it is. So the rain finally died down. I'm gonna go ahead and go inside. I'll show you guys the tour of the truck stop. I'm gonna show you guys those two trucks that I was talking about and give you guys a little walk around. I think they also got a gym over there too. I already went to the gym today, so I'm not gonna touch that, but any other time I would. That's another reason that I like the petrol truck stops because a lot of times they do have gyms at their locations and I haven't really noticed that at many other truck stops. So I wish that was something that they started implementing that they could start putting gyms everywhere because you know, I think that's great. I think that's something that us truckers need out here on the road. Sometimes it's not always easy to pop into another gym whenever you're parked and situated at the truck stop. And you know, not everybody wants to bobtail or has time to bobtail. And as you know, getting an Uber to the gym is expensive and you know, we're not gonna wanna do that every time. So 
I think that it's a great idea that they put the gyms in the truck stops and if they could do that at more truck stops, that would be greatly appreciated. And like I said, all in all, it's a great thing. We're on the road for hours. We need some activity in our lives and it should be easy to access. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and show you guys. I'm gonna grab a shower and get a bite to eat as well. So I'm just gonna take you guys straight to the back. We're gonna cut through here. I'll show you guys a little bit more of the store in a bit, but I did wanna show the two trucks off first. It's definitely the most exciting attraction about this truck stop. And you can see that big, beautiful pink Peterbilt right here climbing up these stairs. I never really thought that I would be into a pink semi truck, but honestly, this one's super clean in my opinion, and I really wouldn't even mind driving it. This truck even features its own t-shirt known as the Pink Prowler and honestly I forgot to pick up one of these shirts when I was here last time but next time I go I definitely want to get one. Now we're going to pass over here to the Kenworth and this truck is just absolutely flawless in my opinion like it is super clean guys. I would love to have a truck like this and hopefully one day in the future I'll be able to. I just got to stay persistent with what I'm doing now and you know anything's possible. I also think it's super cool that they have the trailer in here attached to the truck as well. They're showing off all this artwork that they put on the sides. That's pretty unique in its own and really just having two trucks this big inside of a truck stop is something different. Don't really see that too much in other places. But I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think? If you could pick one of these two trucks or say they were given to you for free out of the two, which one would you pick? Let me know in the comments below. I'd definitely like to hear your guys' opinions on it. And then over here we got some chrome exhaust pipes for all you guys who like to customize your trucks. You know, hopefully I'll be able to do that one day as well. And then we also have some brake buttons here. These all look pretty cool. And we also have these tops for your gear shifting stick. These are all really unique. I haven't really seen anything like this before, so definitely think they look pretty cool though. So now I finally get to sit down and eat. I got some turkey sausage, some hash browns, eggs, chicken sandwich. I'm about to tear it up. And then after that, we can finally go take a shower and I'm gonna wrap it up for the night, get some rest and get ready for the next day. Back on the road, we got about 30 minutes until we get to the other truck stop where I'm gonna get my weight. So this is a military shipment and we have to get the weight within a 50 mile radius of where the customer's house is. And once we get to that truck stop, we'll have another 30 minutes to drive until we get to their place. So we're back at it with the rain again, guys, which is actually really bad for us because today is really important that we need to stage all the stuff out in the driveway, all the boxes, all the furniture. That way we can load it in the best way possible. And obviously with the rain, we can't do that because all the stuff will get wet. And it's really gonna delay the whole process and just make it harder on the loader. So being that we do still have another 30 minutes until we get to our destination, hopefully it stops raining by then or it's just not raining like that over there, but we'll see. So a lot of times I run out west and I gotta say one thing that's a little bit better about doing the jobs over there is it doesn't rain near as much. It always sucks having to move in the rain. It really just delays everything and you can't really move stuff the way that you want to go ahead and grab our lightweight real quick I'm gonna go inside and grab that guys all right so I got my weight scale ticket this is where we're at right now 62,000 right on the dot too and we'll see what it is after I get that next shipment on all right we're getting pretty close now guys not gonna lie I got this anxious feeling so I'm just wondering how today is gonna work out. I'm wondering if we're gonna be able to grab it all and just how it's gonna play out, but we'll see how it is. One thing that I am really thankful for though is that it stopped raining and it looks like it's starting to dry up over here too. So we'll be able to stage things out in the driveway like we were planning to originally. And like I said, that's just gonna help us so much more being able to piece it together one by one and being able to see everything there. That way we know what can go next and what's gonna fit best.
this neighborhood has got some pretty big streets. It's easy to maneuver through here. So now that we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and start my inventory. I'm gonna start tagging everything, putting a sticker on all the furniture and boxes, and writing down the condition that they're in or what the contents are that are inside of the boxes. And once we get that completed, I'll go ahead and start breaking apart the beds and taking apart some of the furniture. And then I'm gonna start wrapping it up with the pads and we can start loading it inside. My guy is definitely loading it super tight, trying to fill every little space that we can. And this is the amount of space that we have left, 3,800 to 4,700. So we almost have a thousand cubes. We don't have a whole lot left. We're getting down to the last little bit, but we will see how it goes. Hey, good morning, guys. So we ended up having a really late day yesterday. And I just ended up finding parking right by the place. But anyways, right now I'm headed to go to a scale. That way I can get that final weight on my truck and see what it is. The truck is literally completely maxed out, but we did fit every single thing, every single box, every little piece of furniture. It's all in my trailer, and I even got the part box down here. So we did have to end up tailgating a few items, mostly my equipment, and you know, we had a couple items here and there, and we just sealed them off in plastic, and we also had a tarp, and then we re-plastic wrapped them again, so that's nice and taken care of. The important part is, is that we didn't have to call for an overflow and that we were able to manage to get everything. So super happy about that. The guys that I use, you know, they're top tier. The loader does an excellent job and I have to thank those guys for helping me be able to fit all that stuff. So big shout out to them. You know, if any of you other drivers ever need help out there and you're in Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, Washington DC, any of those areas, you can reach out to Virginia's finest relocation experts. You can find them on Facebook. They're all over the groups. They're certified, they have pictures, they have reviews, you know, they do a great job, so. I definitely highly recommend using those guys and I honestly can't wait to use them again for my next job so but like I said guys I'm gonna head over to the scale and I'm gonna go get my weight and I'll let you guys know what the final weight is. They got a tailgate too. Can I get a first weight? Truck number? 239763. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get parked and go see what that final weight is. I actually need a loop back here to get some fuel too. So we got the official weight here, 
came out to be a gross of 70,540. Even though it's slap full, sometimes there's a lot of bulky items that don't weigh as much. And in the first shipment that I had in there, there was definitely a lot of light boxes. So that happens sometimes. It takes up a lot of space, but doesn't weigh that much. That ended up being about 8,540 pounds. So it wasn't quite the 10,000 pounds that it was estimated to be. Like I said, those are just estimates. They're not always 100%. And sometimes the items can look bulkier or they can take up more space than what they actually weigh but anyways guys that wraps it up for this video like always i hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video